morning. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Hey, 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 hey. Good morning, he said, dropping all of his papers. Let me put that there. Good morning, church. Oh, it's an autumny welcome. Good morning, church. And good morning online. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome. I am very happy to be here. You may not be to see me, but our, our beloved pastor is away visiting family. So you've got me and uh, all the rest of the team running the ship today. Is that okay? Yeah. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, welcome online. Hello to you. Hello to you. We welcome you. We know you're there. We get the feedback from all of your lovely, lovely comments. Um, if there's anyone new here today, anyone here that's visiting us for the first time? No. Well, welcome to you anyway. <laughs> do you know what I'm going to do today? I am going to ask you just to go and say hello to someone very quickly. Very quickly. You've probably seen someone and thought, oh, I'd like to say hello. You can go and do that now. Greet them in the name of the Lord. Say hello and welcome someone in the name of the Lord. Good morning, good morning. I've got a poem for you. Yet another poem. Have a listen to this. This goes for you online as well. Good morning, church, and welcome. Thank you, especially those online. And seeing every person here, you're looking mighty fine. It doesn't matter where you're from or what you look like too. God's love is free for everyone. And yes, that includes you. So take a pew and give us just a portion of your day so we can share the love of God and what he wants to say. Amen, amen, amen. Um, in thinking about today, I was led to a portion of scripture from Micah. You know, um, often why people struggle with becoming Christians, it's because they feel they have all the work to do. They have to do something. They have to earn their salvation. They have to earn uh, the, the, the right standing with God. And of course, that's not true. And so for us today, I just want to remind us that, that, well, the scripture will speak for itself, but it's for us to come to God with a humble heart. That's all he requires. We've got communion today. For those of you online watching, if you want to uh, join us, you're quite welcome to get some bread and some juice to join us for communion later. But I just want to share this from Micah chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. What does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And that's the frame of mind that I, I encourage us to have as we come before the Lord today. God bless you. God bless you. And in line with communion later on, the two things that we always mention are that we love the Lord. If, you're, if you don't regularly serve here, that's not a problem. You are welcome to the Lord's table as long as you love the Lord. And also that you know that you're in right standing with God. That if there's anything that is outstanding that, you're, that is not right, that you put that right before you take the Lord's Supper. 
And so worship, we're going to start worshiping now. And that is an opportunity to do that, to really lift our hands and our hearts to God and just bring all of what's not quite right, give that to him, which puts us in a really good position to receive what he has for us today. I'm going to hand over to Etienne. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Let's stand up and sing this beautiful hymn. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God.
Join with your clapping. We pray to God. Psalm 47 says, Clap your hands, all you people, and praise the Lord. So we're going to sing the first verse and the last verse. And I want you to join in. This is the corporate worship. Let's praise our Lord and say, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I stand amen. There are more wonderful people, rich people, famous people out there, Lord. Oh, why did you come to us, Lord? We can only say thank you this morning. We can only say thank you, oh God, for all you have done for us. Thank you, Lord. Bless be your holy name. Mm. Ah, beautiful hymn which says who can cheer our heart like Jesus through the trouble through the trials of life through the circumstances you've been going through he is the only one who can go deep in your heart and bring joy when everything else fades outside of you, he is the only one who can cheer our hearts and let's praise him this morning
for those of you uh, who came after the original welcome bless you it's good to see your faces it's good to see your faces Vanessa it's a joy to see you here God bless you and Peter of course God bless you forgive me I didn't commit from the outset our service to our Heavenly Father let me correct that now shall we pray daddy God Lord Jesus Christ Holy Spirit we welcome you here we praise you, God Almighty. We don't have the words to acknowledge who you are and how great you are and what you've done for us. But we thank you. In whatever language we speak, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We acknowledge that you are the one true living, loving God and that we serve you, we worship you, and that we've been chosen by you. Holy Spirit, come into this place. Flood our hearts and our minds. Open our ears and our hearts, Lord. Have your way. We welcome you to the very center of this service, the very center of this building, and ultimately the very center of our hearts. Lord, we love you. We lift our heads, we lift our hands, we lift our hearts to you. We commit this service to you and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you bless us. Not just that you bless us, Lord, but that you have your way that you will flood and flow through each and every one of us, even through the very fiber of this building. The church is not the building, Lord, but we are here, and so we sanctify and, and dedicate this place to you as we meet here. We thank you that we have the freedom, Lord, to worship. We hear in the news about places where Christians are persecuted for their faith, for serving you. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom that we have to meet freely and serve you. And Father, let us be a shining light to the community of Leicester. Lord, we've often had it where people have literally walked in off the street to join our service to hear about you. Father God, have your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Richard, Richard Foreman. <laughs> I know we have more than one Richard. We don't want them all standing up. I'm going to hand over to Richard for communion. Bless your hearts. Delwyn, in his prayer, said, be the center. When we come to communion, Jesus is the center. I want to read some familiar words that we often read. 
when we come to communion from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to be reading from verse 23 down to verse 28. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. And just a few thoughts as we prepare our hearts to come before the table. Jesus said, do this. Do this. It was his instruction his command. It's not an option for Christians. We are to do this. In Acts 2 and verse 42, we read of four things that the early church devoted themselves to. It was the apostles' doctrine, it was fellowship, it was prayer, and it was the breaking of bread. And we are to do this. We are to do it in remembrance of him. Jesus is the focus. Jesus is the focus of the, the communion table. And it, in particular, his sacrifice. The bread and the wine are visual emblems to remind us of the cost of that sacrifice. His body, represented by the bread, was broken. We read, don't we, in scriptures, what his body endured. The beating the crown of thorns on his head, the nails in his hands, and his blood that was shed that we might know forgiveness of sin. We are to remember what it cost our Lord to bear away our sin. And the table is also a proclamation. We read that whenever you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death. We celebrate two sacraments, baptism and communion. Baptism reminds us of the mission of the church, to go into the world to preach the gospel and to make disciples. Communion reminds us of what it cost to be able to offer salvation to everyone. There is also a futuristic element to the Lord's table because we're to do it until he comes. Our hope as believers is that one day Christ will come and reign on earth. And lastly, the table is a place of self-examination. 
We're to come with the right attitude. We're told to examine ourselves before we eat and before we drink. This is a precious time. A precious time. Because we do it quite often, it can sometimes become familiar. But may you never lose what it cost our Lord to bear away our sin. If you're watching online, perhaps you, if you haven't yet got bread and wine and you want to join with us, while I invite the servers to come forward, just give you an opportunity to do that. Will the servers come forward and then we'll pray. just going to pray before we take the bread and the wine. Heavenly Father, in the words of him, help me to understand it. Lord, help me to take it in what it costs you to bear away my sin. Lord, as we come to the Lord's table, we do indeed remember that the bread represents your body that was broken for us, and the blood represents, the cup represents your blood that was shed. For without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. So, Lord, we give you thanks for your invitation to come and to remember you. We thank you for our salvation, and we eat, Lord, in remembrance of you. Amen.
Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns His face away, as wounds which mother's chosen one. Calvary that we stand here in the righteousness of Jesus and so we give you praise we give you praise Lord we will never know how much it cost you Lord but thank you God for what you did and help us Lord to live according to the holy calling by which we have been called as we leave this place may, may we be the light of the world in Jesus name we pray Amen. 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 God bless you. Please take your seats. Thank you to Richard and the servers for your service. God bless you. And actually, on the point of thanks, before the children go out, um, last Monday, the 31st of October, we had our light party. And I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you that came and helped in whatever capacity. Thank you. It was a great success. We had... A great number of families, obviously with children, 
And the more families that were in here celebrating God's light, the fewer were out there trick-or-treating in the dark. So God bless you. And I hope the kids, if there are any kids here that came, that you had a great time. I certainly did. And I think uh, Pumpkin Pete had a good time as well. <laughs> now, I wasn't Pumpkin Pete. He's gone back to the vegetable patch in the greenhouse. He's gone back in the greenhouse. Have we got anyone who has celebrated a birthday in the last week or is going to celebrate a birthday in this coming week? Anyone? Oh, oh, there we go. Is that? Bring her forward. Hiya, sweetheart. Come forward. Dave. Which David? David? David Adams? Mr. Adams? Look at this beautiful princess. Can I, can I just get you to come up here, darling, so everybody can see you? Take your time in that dress. There you go. Turn around. Beautiful. What's your name, my darling? Anya. Anya. And when's your birthday? Uh, Friday. Friday. Friday or yesterday? Yesterday. Okay, okay. And Mr. Adams, come along, sir. We want to honor and celebrate you. We won't ask you how old you are, but we just want to wish you a happy birthday. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> He's looking daggers at Philip. <laughs> Hello, good sir. Hello. So we've got Anya and David. Anyone else in the week gone or the week coming? Another birthday. Yes. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. And, and actually, let's give Anya a proper round of applause because I was asking her when her birthday was and I interrupted your, your honor. Let's give her a round of applause. I do believe that's Belle's dress, isn't it? From Beauty and the Beast. So you're the beauty. Who's the, who's the beast? Come, come here, come closer, come closer, come closer. And you are? Namalinda. Namalinda. Perfect. And, of course, we know Sir David. Sir David of Adams. Okay. So, let you, we know what to do. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Namalinda and your David. Birthday, dear. Blah, 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 blah. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. And many more. Well done, well done, well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, before you go, Anya, can you count to three? You can. Okay. Kids, get ready because this is your moment. Because on the count of three, you'll be able to go to your lessons and youth. Um, there's a few youth I see. Uh, you'll get ready to go, because on the count of three, with Princess Belle, you can go. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> four, there you go. Come down, darling. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Belle. Anya, Anya, Belle. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Okay, uh, I'm going to do some notices. We have a fair few notices. Um, in fact, we have so many, I think the notices will be longer than my message. So, uh, in no particular order, uh, newsletter, our brilliant, beautiful, bold, benevolent Brian. Do you like the alliterate? Uh, 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 do you like the intro? Um, he is responsible for our newsletter, which goes out every two months. Is that right? Every two months? Yeah. So what Brian is asking is if you have any information at all for the newsletter, which goes out in December, he would like it by the end of this month. So Sunday, the 27th of November at the latest. Okay. Is that all right, Brian? Great. Now, uh, I've said thanks for the light party. Um, Sharon's Christmas event. Okay. Let me check my mobile because I've got the information I've got the information here in fact let me let me go to the the pal mic it'll be easier one two one two one two there we go the power of technology here we go so Sharon lovely Sharon let me just get this up uh, this um, uh, notification is going to be put on the website but on Saturday the 26th of November there is a Christmas event 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. You can come, relax, have a break, uh, decorate a Christmas cookie. You can make your own Christmas cards or decorations, and you can buy beautiful handmade crafts. And it's all to support Amina School in the Congo. Those of you that don't know, uh, lovely Etienne, please stand up, sir. 
lovely Etienne uh, has, is, is heading up um, the funds that we as a church generate to send to a church in Congo. And there's already some great improvements, I believe, with doors and windows. And uh, ch- parents are now apparently sending their children to this particular school because they know they'll be protected from the elements. Such is the great work that you are doing. So that is Saturday, the 26th of November. 11 till 2, and that will be here at this church, okay? So that's that one there. Uh, the shoebox appeal. I told you we have a lot of messages. Now, lots of people were asking about the shoeboxes. First of all, there are loads here. There is a box, a brown cardboard box perched against the radiator just here. If you need more boxes, there are plenty. Please help yourself and take them. And my beautiful wife, her, who is not here today, along with my daughter, because Jada goes to Girls Brigade. Lots of you have been asking. Jada goes to Girls Brigade in the week, but they've got their special service today. Uh, and she's reading a verse, so praise God for my daughter who's bigging up God. Uh, they're on Blackbird Road, Epworth Church on Blackbird Road. Uh, but Yvonne has asked me to ask you, to tell you, that the deadline for box submissions is next Sunday, the 13th. That's next Sunday. Now, if you... Um, uh, want to donate money instead, then again, my beautiful wife has asked me to tell you to either give the money to her direct or to Sue, lovely Sue, but tell, if you're giving it to Sue, tell her that it's for the shoebox appeal. Okay, so the shoeboxes, there are plenty there. Um, the deadline is next Sunday, so don't forget that. Uh, Sunday the 27th, which is the last Sunday of this month, normally, as you know, it's our family service. This month, November, it won't be. We have a gentleman by the name of Paul Hudson, who is the Elim Regional Leader, and he'll be coming to speak to us on the last Sunday of this month. And so the family service will be the following Sunday on the 4th of December, which I think is Chris Dingle as well. So the Sunday the 27th is not the family service. We've got a guest speaker, Paul Hudson, coming to speak to us. The family service is the 4th of December, uh, along with Chris Dingle. Um, we've got the usual groups this week, friendship group, which is every Wednesday, 2 till 4, in the hall next door. We've got Elim Tots, every Monday, 10 till 12. So if you know of any uh, families with preschool children, uh, then by all means bring them along. Sharon and the rest of the uh, helpers there do an amazing job. Uh, 10 till 12 every Monday. We have our prayer meeting, which is at 7.30 every Thursday. And you have the choice of coming here and experiencing it live or you can join on Zoom, 7.30 every Thursday. Um, we also have, oh, I should say, I've, got, I've written T's and C's at the bottom. Terms and conditions, no, it's T's and coffees. <laughs> T's and coffees will be available through in the hall at the back there at the end of the service. Please stay, have a coffee, have a tea, and join us. Please feel free to do that. Uh, collection will be uh, taking a collection today. We'll be taking a collection today. Never mind. We will be taking a collection today at the end of the message. So we'll hand the bags around. We've had some brilliant volunteers who've offered to do that for us. And finally, we have a Bible course. A Bible course that begins this coming Tuesday. It's at 1.30 and repeated again at 7.30. So if you can't make the day, you can make the evening or vice versa. Uh, That will be here. And I think it runs for eight weeks. Now, I, I took the liberty of having a sneak peek at the first, uh, the first lesson. And it's really very good. I, I'm a very simple man. Not that I'm stupid or anything like that. But I really like to keep things simple. And, of course, when it comes to God's Word and the Bible, with 66 books, and it just can seem overwhelming as to where we start... It's a brilliant introduction, so I really encourage you, I really do encourage you to come along to that. That's this coming Tuesday and every Tuesday thereafter for eight weeks, 1.30 p.m. and 7.30. They're both the same, so it's just a matter of whichever one you can make. And I do believe there is a video trailer to accompany it. The Bible to me is one big blank, really. I open it. I look at it, I read a verse, but nothing sort of sticks with me. I was given the Bible at a young age, maybe had a devotional to sort of go along with the Bible, and it's, just read that, and I'm like, okay, I'm reading it, but nothing, it wasn't exciting. It's just confused me, bored me, if I'm really, really honest, because I don't understand it. And this is what I'm hoping to sort of, the course to help me, where do you start with the Bible? 
So we've done five weeks of the Bible course and we're about to start week six. Do you know what? The Bible has come to life and it's made me want to read more. So when I finish, you know, the course, the end of the session sort of thing, I go home and I'm like really quite excited to just open the Bible and sort of read on. It's the characters, and it, because they're not characters, they're real people. And I think that's what's really sort of opened my mind. I've always known about Moses when I was a little girl, Sunday school and everything, but actually knowing now where to find Moses. And the whole story, there's bits that I didn't really know and it's just brought it to life so I can actually see you know, the story in my head. Yes, being brought up a Christian, but I still didn't have the answers. But what this Bible course has done is, I can actually talk about, you know, it to people and say, yeah, this is, and I think it's the passion in my voice as well now that people are like, oh wow, really? It's something that um, I would recommend, definitely to others, <laughs> definitely recommend. I've always questioned the Bible, but I've never studied it. But this is one way of studying it and an easy way of studying it because you're doing it with people. You're there to ask questions. There's videos to help you. There's readings to help you. It makes me want to read on rather than just stop. Well worth coming to. When you consider that this is God's word, God's word, the inspired word of God, anything that uh, will help us to understand that and be, be uh, grown and developed by that is obviously a good thing. Every Tuesday, 1.30 p.m., 7.30 p.m. God bless you. Let's pray. Loving Father God, Daddy, I need your help. Lord Jesus Christ, Father God, Holy Spirit, we implore you, I implore you, come now, Lord, and speak what you want to be spoken. Lord, where we need to be challenged, challenge us. Where we need to be comforted, comfort us. Where we need to be encouraged, encourage us, Lord. And I know that the, what, whatever word you give, it will be to each and every person here exactly what they need it to be. Please help me, Father God. I humbly ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Who wants to be encouraged? Who's up for being encouraged? Yeah, me too, me too. Okay, I'm going to shake things up a little here. Um, Mr. Wood, Sir David. Oh, he's hiding behind a pillar. Could I ask you to, to come down here, please, sir? Now, uh, this beautiful family here. Oh, they're looking at me. Could you just move up one, please? Yep, there you go. That's it. Yep, there you go. They're thinking, where's he going with this? Could you have a seat there, please, good sir? Thank you, thank you. Philip, yeah. could I ask you to just sit over there? Any, any, any seat you like. Yep, thank you very much, good sir. Steve, Steve, Mr. Cox, yeah, come and, come and join us. Come and join us. Oh, everyone's avoiding my eye now and my gaze because they're thinking, oh, I don't want him to pick at me. Oh, dear. Just have a, have a seat, just, just behind Sister Madhu there. There, good sir. Now, who else have we got? Who else have we got? Um... Oh, shall I pick the man you found, Matt? No, I won't. I won't embarrass him. I won't embarrass him. One more, one more, one more, one more. Cam, could I ask you to join me, good sir? To join me on the front row here. Okay. I'm really going to stir things up now. Uh, Daniel, could I ask you to stand up? Just stand, stand where you are. Eliza, if I could ask you to stand. And uh, we've had Mr. Adams, so we'll have Mrs. Adams. If I could ask you ju just to stand where you are. Thank you. Now, I just all I need you to do is very simple. Just turn around 360 degrees and then sit down again. There you go. There you go. Okay, and have a seat. Okay, so the rest of you just stay where you are. And they really are looking, thinking, where's he going with this? Okay. Now, those of you that know me will know that there is method in my madness. So bear with me. I promise you there is a point to this tomfoolery. We, human beings, generally, we don't like change. We don't like change. And in fact, when change comes about in our life, we wrestle with it. We wrestle to the point where what we're trying to do is to re-establish equilibrium, re-establish stability, normality. And that makes us feel comfortable then. Yep. We like water, actually. You know, when I was at school years ago, and we, we were taught water always takes the path of least resistance. That's what we as people are like generally. 
So, why do I ask people to change seats? Why do I ask people to stand up and turn around? Last week, Pastor Dave, in his message, spoke about character, the importance of character, the importance of God developing our character. And one of the things that I want you to take away today is that God is far more interested in your character than in your comfort. And to develop the former, he will upset sometimes the latter. Okay. Those of you that have changed seats, yeah, actually. Those of you that have changed seats, you can go back now to your own seats. It wasn't that painful. You're happy there. Fine? That's absolutely fine. That's good. That's good. I'll just wait for Steve to get back to his seat. Thank you for, for, for joining in. I, as I say, I hope you realize that there is a, a, a godly point to my shenanigans. I'm going to ask you to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. I'll read that again. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. My title today is, Are You Sitting Comfortably? So the point of all the shenanigans was just to get people to change their seats, which may just slightly raise their anxiety level. Not David's, of course. Because we don't like to be unsettled. But the point is, is that that's the very thing that God will do to get us to where he wants and needs us to be. So let me go on and explain. This verse is, uh, uh, well, quite literally, an eaglet learns to fly by being thrown out of the nest. It, there's no point at which a baby eagle thinks, looks out of the nest and thinks, oh, I'll have a go at flying today. They don't. And eagle's nests are really high. You know, the great thing about the eagle, when it's, when it's bothered by pigeons or other birds, it doesn't fight with them. It simply just catches a thermal and goes higher because other birds can't, uh, can't compete with it up there. They can't fly that high. And so the eagle builds its nest really high to prevent it, uh, its nest from being attacked by predators, its eggs or its young being, being harmed. So it's really high. So the nest, of course, like most nests, is very comfortable. It's filled with twigs, and then it's, it's got downy material, and it's got feathers. It's very, very comfortable for the chicks. And sometimes that's where we are. We reach a place of comfort. And it's nice. I'm nothing against that whatsoever. Nothing against that whatsoever. But then there comes a day when they've grown enough and they've got enough feathers on their wings and they will practice, you know, they'll stretch their wings in the nest. But then the mother will, will kick them out of the nest, literally. And the eaglet, of course, falls because it doesn't know how to fly. And then the mother will come along, swoop down. It's amazing, really. Isn't nature brilliant? It will swoop down, catch the young, take it back up to the nest, flip it in, and then do it again. And eventually, the eaglet thinks, oh, that's what these are for. And it learns to fly. There comes a point where the eaglet then swoops and takes off. So what's my point? That's exactly what God will do with us. That's exactly what God will and does do with us. And it's a pattern that is established right through the Bible. Starting with, the, well, not starting with, actually, a very obvious example is the children of Israel. For the purpose of time, uh, I, I won't read the verses, but in Numbers chapter 9, verse 15 to 23, we know that the children of Israel were led by a, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The fire by night not only illuminated the way that they needed to go, but it kept them warm. And the cloud by day gave them shade from the searing hot sun in the deserts. I've been to um, the Holy Land and it's hot. 
So it, that's what it did for them. But when the cloud, the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire moved, the children of Israel moved. When it stopped, they stayed still encamped. And Numbers 9 gives the account that sometimes it was a day or two where they, they camped, and then they were on the move again. Now, two million people who get to a point of, okay, great, we can rest. Oh, and then, so, oh, the cloud's moving, pack up, quick, here we go. And that was a regular pattern. Sometimes it will be a day or two, sometimes it will be weeks, months, years where they would stay and settle. But eventually, they would have to move. God would cheer them, cheer them up and move them on. Elijah, last time I spoke, I spoke about Elijah. Elijah, in uh, 1 Kings 17, verses 2 to 9, has a couple of instances where God asks him, God tells him to go to a place. And there's an important thing here, because you may well think, well, I know God's placed me where I am. So why do I need to move? Well, God placed Elijah. He first told him to go to a brook. And there at that brook... He had water from the brook to drink, and the ravens brought him food. But then eventually, the brook dried up. So Elijah had to move on. But even then, God said, uh, leave this place, go to another place. There's a widow that I've already set up, and she's going to look after you. So the pattern of stay, get comfortable, stay here, do what we need to do while we're here. Oh, now it's time to move, is a regular one. The disciples the disciples had regular, ordinary lives until Jesus came along. Jesus came along and it was like, whoa, my, I don't recognize my life anymore. And interestingly, after Jesus was crucified, resurrected, and resurrected, but before he ascended, the disciples went back to what they used to do. Because they were feeling a bit lost, really, amidst everything. Went back to what they used to do, but then they saw Jesus. And that was the moment from which, as far as I know from studying scriptures, they never went back to those old jobs again. So what's my point? And it's a relatively short message today. But God will at some point stir your nest. He will. Now that stirring can often be felt or will, will be manifest in two ways. One, within your spirit. You'll often get a, an unease, you know, what is it, Lord? And two, very commonly, will be in your circumstances. A very obvious nest shaker was the pandemic. Now, hear me clearly. I am not saying that God sent the pandemic just to shake everybody up. I am not saying that. What I am saying is that with the pandemic happening, it was an opportunity for God to use that to shake our nest. Now, a lot of people still now, even though the pandemic's gone, still now people are trying to maneuver and control their lives to get back to how life used to be. And as believers, when God shakes up your nest and moves you on, very rarely is there a going back. Very rarely do you go back to life how it used to be. Even if you go back to the same job or whatever, but you, you yourself will be different. What's my point with this? When you feel that stirring, don't wrestle with it. This is really difficult, and I, I know from personal experience, I, I'm speaking as much to myself as to you. This is an opportunity to embrace it. Yeah, but I don't know what's going to happen, and oh, it's really uncomfortable, and I've never been in this position before. That's the whole point. Do you know why? Because what God wants you to rely on him. Because when you're in comfort land, when you know everything that's, that's, you know, you know the way things work, you know, Monday to Friday, you, your diary's probably already mapped out for you. Nothing wrong with that at all. But sometimes we get so used to the norm, we get so used to the routine, that actually we're less focused on where God is in all of that. People, every single one of us, God wants to use us in a mighty, amazing way. Every single one of us. I don't care what your age is. I don't care what your gender is. Every single person in this room and watching online, God wants to use you. And if you're serious about being used, then he will stir up your nest. He will shake you up. So if you're in a position right now where you feel your nest is shaking, 
you know, it's not, it's not what it used to be. Or, or something that happened to me where I left one profession and then when I tried to go back to it, the door was very, very firmly closed. And the reason why I was trying to go back to it is because I couldn't see what was ahead. I couldn't work out what, what, what was ahead. So, all right, I, I, I know this, so I'll go back to that. In our journey with God, we never go back. We don't go backwards. We move, he moves us forwards. So I want to encourage you. In fact, I, I've, I've got a quote here. We turn to God for help when our foundations are shaking, only to learn that it is God shaking them. So if you're rebuking your circumstances, if you're rebuking the resistance and the difficulties that are coming against you, if God has ordained them, you're rebuking in vain. It's an opportunity for you to find out from God what is it that he wants you to learn and or wants you to do. That's what it is. So it's very, very simple, my friends. When God shakes up the nest, and at some point, if you are serious about walking with God, walking, growing, serving in God, he will shake things up. He will shake things up from a, from a sickness, from a job loss, from it could be anything. You know, as a, as a parent of older children, when they leave the nest, that can be a shake, you know, because previously that's, that's how your life has been dictated. Now, and we talk about it, don't we? We say the empty nest syndrome. Once the kids have all gone and it's just you and me, well, oh, hello, who are you? I haven't seen you for the last 40 years. I, well, I've seen you, but I don't really know who you are. So it's an opportunity. It's a God-given opportunity for you to move upwards to the next level. Because let me tell you, folks, as lovely as it is to be in the comfort zone, as lovely as it is to be on the mountaintop, and praise God for that. Praise God if you're in a great place where everything's going really well. Praise God for that, and there is nothing wrong with that. But very rarely do we learn and grow on the top of the mountain. Very rarely. It's when we get into the valley, it's when the nest is shaken, when we're kicked out the nest, and we're flapping, furious, thinking, I'm going to crash. I'm going to help me, God. Help me, help me, help me. He's promised that he will catch us. He'll take us back up. And he'll do it again. I, I should just mention, because I'm, I'm very, very mindful with uh, just Bible studies and discussions with some good people here, that it's important that we, when we uh, use scripture, that we use it in context. The context of this verse Again, it's a time of change. It's in Deuteronomy. And Moses is coming to the end of his time. And God is saying, you can't take the children uh, of Israel into the promised land, but go to this place, go to this mountain, and you can see it from afar. You're going to die. Joshua is going to take over. But God also then chronicles, he, he lists the issues that he has had with the children of Israel, their unfaithfulness, the fact that every five minutes they're moaning or they've gone to other gods or stuff like that. They've just, they've not been consistent. They've not been as faithful as he has. So he identifies the fact that you are my people, particularly the house of Jacob. And even though you're going about your ways and this, that, and the other, I will look after you. But that's a principle that applies right here and now for us. So it's very, very simple, good people. It's very simple. If and when your nest is stirred, ask God. What do you need to do? Just ask God. What, what do you need me to learn here, Lord? What is it that you're trying to say to me? And here's an indication that the nest is being stirred. When your circumstances don't settle back to normality, or that stirring within yourself just doesn't go away. Now, there's a million and one reasons. You could be indigestion. I don't, I don't know. It could be the cheese you had last night. I don't know. But it's important to check it out. It's important to say, God, what is this? What is this, Lord? Because when you look through the Bible, each and every time that God has moved a person or a people on, depending on their response to God's prompting, God's prodding, it's meant that they've either gone on and be blessed or they've gone literally like the children of Israel around the mountain again and again and again. 
So if you find you're going around the mountain, as it were, it's an opportunity to say to God, okay, what, God, what, what is this? What is it that you're trying to tell me? And with this, I'll finish where I started. God is far more interested in your character than he is your comfort. And like a loving parent, he will do what he needs to do to just break off the unpleasant bits, enhance the bits that he needs for you to live to your potential in him, for your blessing and his glory. So don't resist the, uh, the, the stirring. Embrace it. Because God promises that when you embrace it, you take hold of it and move through it. And he will be with you through it. He will be with you through it. You will grow. You will benefit to the point where actually you don't want to go back to how things were or to where you were. And with this, I'll just finish with another um, quote that I found just this morning. Those of you that um, I send the devotional to may, may well recognize this. I hate electronic equipment. Just when you need them, they always start playing up. Come on, behave yourself. In the name of Jesus, work. Here we are. Thank you, Lord. Okay, and this I really will close. For God to explain a trial would be to destroy its purpose, which is calling forth simple faith and implicit obedience. That's Alfred Edersheim. I'll read it again. For God to explain a trial would be to destroy its purpose, which is calling forth simple faith and implicit obedience. Be encouraged. Don't run from the stirring. Embrace it. And God bless you. Let's pray. Father God, you know, Lord, we've heard so many times from well-meaning but maybe misguided teachers that once you give your life to Christ, all your problems are over. And we know that's not true. In fact, Lord, you have told us that in this world, we will have tribulation. But we are to be of good cheer because you have overcome the world. And in this world, we are like you. That's what your word says. Thank you, Father, for this message. You speak to me as much as you speak to anyone else in this room, Lord, and I thank you for it. But Father God, I pray that you stir up Lester Elim to be a people of power, uh, uh, of faith for you, of purpose. Give us a fresh anointing, Lord, of your purpose for us, both as a body of people and for each and every one of us individually. Father God, for those who are stirred now, I, I really pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that rather than quell or quench the stirring, that they will embrace it and ask you what it is that you want to do with them. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. I ask your blessing, Lord, on the rest of today and for the week to come. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I've asked Etienne to, uh, just to play a little um, while we take up the collection. I know um, some people have, uh, they find it difficult to come up to the bags and they're passing their money on to other folk, which is not a problem, but it just, uh, we're bringing the mountain to Mohammed today with the collection. We're bringing it to you.
you restore every heart that's broken. Great are you, Lord. Eat your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. Eat your breath in our lungs. Our praise to your name. Great are you. Let's sing it together. You give life. You give life. You are life. You bring life to the dark. Yes, Lord, eat your breath in our life. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. Eat your breath in our life. So we pour out our praise to only And all the earth, and all the earth will shout your praise. Our heart with God is all we'll sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth, and all the earth will shout. Time. And all the earth, and all the earth will shout. Aha, we'll cry this out, we'll sing. Great, I know it's your breath, it's your breath in our land. Great, great are you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, thank you for your faithful giving. Thank you for your faithful giving. God knows, God knows. Thank you for your faithful giving. Loving Father God, we thank you for what you give to us. Father God, everything we give to you is yours anyway. But we thank you for it, Lord. And we ask that you bless this offering that we give with humble hearts, humble, sincere hearts, Lord. And use it for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, bless us. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Have a great week. If there is anybody who needs prayer for anything at all, I'll be here at the front. There are some of the other leaders too. Don't be shy. Come forward and we will pray for you. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. God bless you. Have a great week. Do the earth we shout your prayer. Our heart.